Big shit, it's a unique hustle, nigga. Big shit, big shit, big shit, big shit. Huh. Name another podcast like this. Hook. Check it, check it, check it. It's a unique hustle. It's your boy ECEO, and I'm here with the lovely official Miss Jamaica. What's going on? Nothing. Walk on, man. So hey, man. You know it's one of those days, man, where I have to use my low voice. <laughs> that the low voice mean I'm being serious. The high voice means sometimes I'm a little sarcastic. Check it, man, Miss. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Wanda McKinley is in the house. How you doing, sweetheart? I'm great. I thought the low voice was sexy voice. No, not at all. No, um, no. It's the because it, I get real. I I get I'm passionate, so I speak out sometimes. So when I do this voice here, it's meaning I'm into what you're saying. Oh, okay. So um, yeah, Dr. Wanda McKinley, man, and she's from We Are Survivors Foundation, and mm-hmm. I mean, hey, man, we happy to have her. You know what I'm saying? Uh, So could you give us a little bit of detail about who you are and just kind of where you come from? And from a little bit of the background from way back as far as you can think about. Whoa. Oh, he said said little. (laughs) (laughs) That'd be a long story, wouldn't it? Come on, summarize it. Give us a little bit more. That's funny because someone said, Wanda, can you send me a bio? So I sent her my bio. She says, oh, we need it to be 100 words. I said, good luck with that one. (laughs) So you're asking me to do the same thing, right? Okay, let's see. Okay, um, let, let, unless you want me to just ask you the questions. Because, honey, let me, I'll okay. take this whole time up just summarizing. Okay, okay. So, have you always wanted to be a doctor when you were younger growing up? You know what? I always wanted to be a doctor, but let me tell you, when I was younger, what we envisioned as doctors, what we saw on TV, so that was the white coats in the hospitals. A lot of little black girls don't realize you can be a doctor and not have to work physically in the hospital. Exactly. You can be a doctor of education, you can be a doctor of counseling, you can be a doctor of whatever you want to be. Mm-hmm. There's also doctor degrees that you can earn from working out in the community. Mm-hmm. Because people also acknowledge what you do in the community. Mm. Not so much as education. Because a lot of little girls, well, I can't afford that. But if you're out here and you're working and you're doing things for people, someone's going to take note. Mm-hmm. So you do have your educational doctorate degrees and you do have your honorary your doctoral degrees. Right. So I wanted to be a doctor since a little girl, but I pictured that doctor. God said, Mm-mm, you're going to be this type of doctor. Okay. So. okay. What, what type of doctor is that? Oh, I have a doctoral degree in social advocacy. And in a year and a half, um, going back, someone a doctoral degree in education that specializes in traumatology. Mm. Okay. What, what, what caused you to go into that? My personal story. Mm-hmm. So being a survivor of domestic violence, I went through over 24 consecutive years of abuse. Okay, so this was um, someone you was married to. Uh, this is, uh, let's see, biological father, stepfather, uncle, cousin, classmate, boyfriend, ex-husband. Oh, okay. okay. And, Hold on, and me, saying that, me. okay, I want to ask one question. Was your mom abused? Um, I found out that my father was also abusing my mother once I came out with my story because my mom, too, I didn't name her, but she was also one of my abusers. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So this is a, a learned behavior? It is a learned behavior, and it's also I have found out it can be genetic. That's why I was. That's what I was getting to because I was just about to ask, was she abused by her parents or by anyone that you know of because or back her in the, or her father because back in the days a lot of um women tend to be more hush hush about certain things and they're not so much they're like when kids can't when their children will come to them and say mom i was touched or mama was they're like shh don't tell nobody just just suck it up everything be okay you know that type of thing try to put a band-aid on it mm-hmm. instead of actually dealing with the situation and a lot of times why they did that is because their mother or their whoever their guardian was did that to them so they didn't know how to, how else to deal with it and for my mom's uh, situation my grandmother her mother was actually killed um, head-on collision by a drunk driver mm. and so my grandmother her mother was a nurse and so when she lost her mother at 13, mm-hmm. she just decided that she was just going to 
pretty much while out. So my, my mom and my father had been together. She was 13, he was 18. Mm-hmm. And she had me when she was 15. So it wasn't that her mom or her, and my grandfather was an alcoholic, so he really wasn't never around. Mm-hmm. And my father took this little girl, and that's all she knew. So my father is a hot-blooded Puerto Rican, Mm -hmm. And my mom was an uneducated little black girl and fell in love with this man that my family hated. I've heard stories how my family really hated my dad. Mm -hmm. And so I just think he had the opportunity, like most abusers do, to mold and groom. And that's what he did to my mom. So it wasn't that she grew up around it. It was just the fact that my father took advantage of. Did my you mother. ever find out if he was around that when he was younger? Why it made him into that person? My father didn't know his father, so I don't know if that stemmed from anger. Okay, um, not knowing really where he came from, mm-hmm. and my brother, my brother, my grandmother passed away fifteen years ago, so she kind of took that with her. And then, you know, you don't kind of ask your Certain elders things. their business. Right. So we have, abs- so it's like for me, a part of me is missing because I have no idea. Where that came from mm-hmm. or where it stemmed from. Mm-hmm. And that's what we all think about is that, you know, uh, well, today, if you're thinking to me, if you're thinking straight, you think about it has to be a learned behavior from somewhere. Mm-hmm. Whether it be, it, it doesn't even have to be genetic. It could be something that you were raised around. It doesn't have to be somebody you're related to, right. but something you've seen, so mm-hmm. it's a learned behavior. Right. But it has to come from somewhere. It, it, it's not always just, you just made up, and I'm just going to start beating on this woman every day. Right. You know? So um, with all that that you have went through over and over, because... Let me ask you, when was the first time you was abused? By who? My biological father. Okay, let me try... <laughs> oh my goodness um, so my mother uh, was a stay at home mom my father was in the Navy so we were really spoiled uh, went to Catholic schools had the best of the best we were like the Brady Bunch on the outside mm-hmm. um, my father got caught I was six years old but I know that wasn't his first time because when the way he got caught my mother walked in with him on top of me so I know that wasn't your first time. You built up the courage to get to that point. But um, when something traumatic happens to you, that's like a date stamp in your mind. So it's, it's hard to try and move beyond that night because that's all I see. But I know that that's not the first time. Wow. So my um, biological father molested me as early as the age of six until I was 12, and my mother left him for the third and final time. Um, when you were 12? When I was 12. And so then my mother met, because my mom was that type of woman that always had to have a man. It just didn't matter, just as long as she had a man. And so the next guy she met, she quickly married, but before they got married, he told her that he wanted to marry me. I was 12 and not marry her. We were all in the same room. And she still married him. She didn't even say a word. So she married him, and right before I turned 13, he raped me. So after I turned 13, after I went through that, and see, my brothers and sisters were in the other room, and my sister's two and a half years younger than me, and my little brother's 10 years younger than me. So I didn't yell, I didn't scream, I didn't do any of that. And once he raped me, kissed me on my forehead, and then I had to clean up the blood. Like, he just, like, nothing happened. So then a couple of months later, my 13th birthday, my dad, when I speak in schools, I always tell these little girls, they watch the video vixens and all that kind of different things in the shopping sprees. Well, I was doing that way back then. So my father, for my birthday, I would fly home, which is San Antonio, and he would allow me to just have them all. Whatever I wanted, it just didn't matter. This 13th birthday, my dad told me that for my birthday, he wanted to be my first, not knowing that my stepfather had already raped me. So my birthday, my biological father raped me. So from the age of 13 to 18, my biological father and my stepfather continuously raped me. 
Then I met my ex-husband about 18 going into 19. And for me, it was at the time, well, for both of us, it was all about sex. And I got pregnant. And then we're together. Okay, we get together. Um, I had my baby when I was 20. We went through, I say, growing pains, craziness, young. Um, his girlfriend moved in to our apartment, and him and his girlfriend slept in our bed while me and the newborn slept on the floor. Um, I've had sexual transmitted diseases from him. I've had his female friends pull guns on me. Like we went through all, I've had my ear busted. He's raped me too. So we went through all kinds of stuff from the age of 18 and a half to 31. So for me, the reason why I left him was because of our little girl. And I didn't want my little girl to grow up thinking that was the way of life. I didn't but, want... Okay, let me stop you for just a second. Mm -hmm. How long did it take? Because I know that you didn't just think about that one day and say, I'm going to leave tomorrow and leave tomorrow. You've probably been thinking about that for years, to build up that coverage to leave because... Not for me, because that was my way of life. That's all I knew. Yeah, she grew up in the so, midst of it. She didn't That was normal see it for as, me. Yeah. So it just... You started thinking about her and you just packed up and left. My daughter was like in the fourth grade and you know, we think we're hiding those things from our babies. We think they don't hear, we think they don't see, but she used to tell me so much stuff after I came out. She was like, mom, I kind of knew something was going on. Um, but for me, I had made up my mind I was gonna stay with him until she turned 18 because I came from a broken home. Correct. And a lot of us don't want to do the same thing to our kids. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, I'm going. Because he, if we would have met and dated, we would have never been together. It was just the fact that I got pregnant. And I just didn't want my child to repeat all the things that I had gone through. Mm -hmm. Because if she see me going through it, she's going to mimic me. We're, mm -hmm. we're their examples. You're right. And yep. Go ahead. Let me ask you, was, was any of it, I know you, you went through sexual abuse. Was it physical abuse involved as well, hitting you or anything like that with any of these relationships? I went through mental, physical, verbal, sexual, financial, spiritual. I went through every different form of abuse you can imagine. Wow. Well, you're a walking miracle. Yeah, God, God is good. I mean, are you married now? I am. And how, how is this relationship? It's totally different. Totally different. Mm -hmm. Whenever uh, you go into a relationship, even with your children's father or your child's father, um, did you tell him all the things that happened to you before? He knew. He knew? Mm -hmm. But it's it, it just something that, you know, um, like, like I said, it, it, it's not something that he probably either seen it or was, it was introduced to it by somebody else. Oh, she, he has? He, he, that's what tell I'm us saying. a little because, bit about that. Because, because you, you can... Uh, only do what you've seen at some point in your life. I was about two and a half, three months pregnant when I first met his parents. Oh. And he's from Louisiana. Mm. And so um, the first day I was there, they, him, his parents got into an argument and his father was an alcoholic and he was drunk and he was on the back patio and his mom went into the house, into the kitchen, and got like a, um, a, knife? a no, not not that dramatic, um, a dish towel, like something. She got something and started, came outside and just started hitting him upside the head. Like just started hitting him. Like it was just the normal thing the normal to do. Thing, yeah. And it was a flag for me. And I literally was like, oh, wow. Shit. But I'm pregnant. Yeah, yeah. And, and at that time, he hadn't hit you yet. Uh, no, uh-uh. No, but she could see the signs. It, it was there. And then his brother was abusive to his girlfriends and was a drug user, and he snorted cocaine, so he could be high. I mean, there's been times when he was sleepwalking and wound up in my room, and his brother's laying next to me, and he's massaging my breast. Wow. So I would slap, like, get your brother. But he would always blame it on, I'm sorry, you know, I was high or I'm drunk, but if you were so out of it, how do you remember you did that the next right, morning? Right, right. Oh, or I thought I was going, because he's like literally woke up and his penis was like, oh, what are you, oh, I thought this was the bathroom. Yeah, so I, it, we like to ignore it because we don't really want to accept it a lot of times, but I, I knew. 
Do you allow your child to go around him? He's deceased. Oh. You talking about the uncle? No, I'm talking about the child's father, your, your daughter. Well, here's father. the thing, right? And that's what I know when God's in the mix. Me and my ex-husband are the best of friends. We were all just together Saturday celebrate our grandbaby's turn two Friday. And people laugh because we literally live, and this was not planned, within walking distance of each other. When we got remarried, we got remarried the same year, like two weeks apart. Of course, mm. that was not planned. So um, we talked uh, within the last, I would say, five to seven years. Because when he lost his brother, it sent him on the spiral. So he actually received counseling and acknowledged a lot of what he did to me. And we've had conversations about that. And we're in a space now that... Can I remember everything that went on when we're talking? Absolutely not. When I have a flashback, I pick up my phone, and he allows me to go through my process. And we're in a space now where we can talk about it. We were younger then. Does it make an excuse or a reason? Absolutely not. But now that we're two different in two different spaces, we've grown a lot, not just in ourselves, but spiritually. So we have a child and a grandbaby. And I just don't want negativity around, especially my grandbaby. You want to change the cycle. And and I say change, I've broken it. Broken it. Because I, I just, I can't. And mm -hmm. and he's in that same space as well. Oh, yes. Because it's although you're not together, it still takes two because mm -hmm. you both are a part of your daughter. It's a do your daughter, right? Mm -hmm. Your daughter's life right. and your grandchild life. Yes. You don't want any of that in the past to, f to fall over in on them. Mm -hmm. You know you, what I mean? Is your daughter and your granddaughter. Is the man that the father of a child is he in her life? Mm -hmm. and, and is they're he, together. They're together. Mm -hmm. They're engaged. Okay, that's dope. Because mm -hmm. I'm just looking at you know the pattern stopping. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, and ironically, he's actually from two streets over where my ex husband's from. This oh. mm. <laughs> is like really. Mm. I was trying to get you away from this space, but he's really good, sir. Well, that's good. <clears throat> so. During the time that you went through all of these things, do you feel like any at any way that you had, you was at fault at anything that happened? No, because I just thought it was normal. So you don't see no wrong that you may have, uh, when y'all argued or something, was there ever a place where you felt like, man, I shouldn't have said nothing, I should have went the other way? Absolutely not. No. Uh-uh. Okay. I, I didn't have, I didn't, I'm not, and once again, not saying that this condones or is a reason but i've never been one of those women with a smart mouth yeah no i don't you know fly off my father was is military so you, you, we were raised to respect yeah regardless and so because i'm not confrontational and i guess because of the abuse i had gone through as a young child it was more so just knowing my place whether i disagree with it now i didn't allow some things i thought you could have spoken up about. Well, even if I would have said something, what would what, what would and then but what difference would it have? Were you made? a quiet child? Were you quiet into yourself, mm. or were you loud and talked to everybody or outgoing? I, I'm just saying, coming up from 12 to 16. And here's the thing about abuse: my childhood is so spotty. Okay. I don't, I don't remember. You don't remember. You try to block it out. I've blocked so much out yeah, that I get the it. only thing I re really remember I was I was born on Halloween, so. I remember my birthday parties because my family went above and beyond. Mm -hmm. My grandmother um, tried to protect me from her son as best she could. So I was with my grandmother a lot in church. She had me in beauty pageants and modeling and dance and all of that. So I remember those things. But as a child, like, who was I besides a bookworm? I so basically you were being raped, or you were being abused sexually, physically, and everything else, but still trying to maintain a normal life. Straight A student. We become, some of us, it's it's kind of, I don't say You put weird. all your focus into something to get a distraction from what mm -hmm. you're really going through. Yeah, because yeah. I am a true overachiever, even to this day, and it's just being focused. That's because if I, I focused on something positive, then what was going on didn't really bother me, and then my mother blamed me because it was like every man comes in my life. That sounds like something I've seen in a movie, like 
Um, you took my husband away from me because he wanted you and not me. What was that movie? There was a movie. Honey, it's life. But it's my, Tyler Perry. My mom yeah. actually had a full-blown sexual relationship with my ex-fiance to wow. get back at me. Wow. Mm. So they were together. Are your mom still alive? Mm -hmm. Do you have a relationship with her now? She just left my house Sunday. Yes. Yeah. We are, now my mom is um, more like my pillar. Uh, there was a time in my how mom. Did you, how did you? God. 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 I no, but I'm, I know it's God. I know it's God, but I'm talking about when you weren't talking, what did you do to start to, that forgiveness process? Did you just come to her one day and say? <laughs> nope. <laughs> so I'm trying, to get, mm -mm. I'm trying to get a picture of what happened. How, how did, did you Yeah, how did, get you, to how that did place? you guys get to the place that you're, in, you're at now? She came to my church. Okay. You invited her? No. Okay. No. I didn't have her. I, no. In my, my phone, it was Karen. So my mom called, it said Karen. <laughs> it didn't say mom or mommy. or mo And that's her real name? Her, yes. Okay. Karen. That, that's what I called her. Um, my mother, the first time I heard my mom say, I love you, I was 31 years old. Yeah. And when she said it, I hung the phone up in her face. Wow. Like, stop playing. And when we were in church, and when the spirit hit her, and she was I was like, please, you're embarrassing me. Stop. So she was pretty you didn't much believe trying to, her? She was trying to open up and, and say, I'm, I'm sorry for what happened. After all that, yeah. Mm -hmm. And you didn't believe her? We've had fist fights. Uh, no, like, mm -mm. I actually, because my mother was so negative, I made sure that my child wasn't around her grandmother because I didn't want, I tried to keep all of the negativity away from my baby. Mm -hmm. And... It was so bad that until, re like, like I said, about five, seven years ago, my daughter thought that her grandmother chose her cousin over her. She didn't know that, no, your mom removed you from your grandmother's life because of the type of person that your grandmother was. Did you eventually was. tell your daughter? Yeah, she knows now. Oh, yeah. Okay. But I'm still trying to see. Okay, so she came to your church. Mm -hmm. She did all of that. But when was... What did it that take? Breaking point. Yes. What did it take for you to say, "Okay, mom, I do forgive you"? How long did it take from the moment, from that day when she went to church, to the day that you said, "You know what? I see you're not giving up, and I see that you're you you look like you're true to what you know what you're trying to do." So I forgive you. There wasn't a time um, on it, and I didn't physically just say, "Okay, I believe you." I just it, it just happened because. Healing just happened. It, it just happened. And Sweet. looked up over time. And now the child that you shunned, the child that had to ask permission to come home for the holidays, the child that you didn't want around you, now I'm really the main one that makes sure you're okay. Mm -hmm. And you have two other siblings. Mm hmm And, okay. Mm. Mm -hmm. But you're the oldest one. I am. Wow, you know, it's extraordinary the stories that I'm sitting here listening to because you really, these are stories really that, that's mind-blowing, but you know they're out there, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And like I said, I commend you just for being a strong black woman and, and making it to now and saying, you know what, all that stuff, I, I went through it and I'm, I'm able to talk about it. I'm able to, I mean, and so how do you do you? I know this. Your ministry is uh, and able to give. Yeah, back. yeah. Your ministry is is in doing something to go toward target that niche market that you was affected by. Mm -hmm. So, um, how did you get into doing that? Huh. I'm. I love Joyce Myers. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, this particular evening, I was watching Joyce Myers when it went off. Got up, take a shower. Right. Turn the shower on and. A lot of people always ask me, how did you make it through all those years of abuse? And the only answer I can give them is God. Because mm. even when my father was raping me, the only thing I see is me above him watching him rape me. Wow. Like I never can see his face. I never see, I can't, I don't never, I've never ever remember looking up at him or my stepfather. I just always remember being above them. So like you're not raping my spirit, you're not raping my soul, you're just raping a shell, you're using my right. body because I'm above you. And that's literally what happened every time I was raped. Wow. So I tell people that what I went through, God 
all of the hurt and pain that I was supposed to feel then, I didn't feel it. So every time I was raped, I would get up like nothing happened. This particular night, all of the pain that he protected me from through all of those years, Came he back. allowed me to feel it in one moment. And oh my God, oh my God, man. So that night he told me that my purpose and my calling was to be transparent. So I, of course, after I got through crying and went through that, me and God went back and forth for about three years. Because- That took a while. Mm. <laughs> you wrestled with God like Jacob. Because mm. I, I was just like, I, no, I'm not. Like not. I'm not gonna do that. Because at that point, you were still ashamed of what you went through to, to I, was it out shame. there? Mm -mm. Wasn't ashamed. Wasn't ashamed. Angry. And it's like it was nobody's business. And then, yeah. you know, you're no. raised that we're going behind closed doors. Stay, Stay behind. behind closed. That's for real. Like, mm -hmm. as a child, that is embedded in your mind, regardless of what's going on behind closed doors. Certain things you just hold on to. And it, it, to me, it was nobody's damn business. Not to mention what, freaks, what freaked everyone out that knows me and is around me, I was still a daddy's girl. Mm -hmm. Me and my father's relationship was so close that, um, like I said, he lives in San Antonio. I live here in Dallas, Fort Worth. And my dad called me one Sunday. He's like, Wanda, what are you doing? I'm like, it's Sunday. I'm getting ready to go to church. I'm going to leave here in 15 minutes. He's like, well, I'm going to go with you. Dad, I'm going to sign you are six hours away. He said, no, I'm going to go to church with you. I was like, whatever. He's like, open your door. It was 10.15 a.m. My dad had his church suit on, had driven from San Antonio, went to church with me, went to eat, and then drove back to San Antonio. Like he lived down the street. My birthday parties, my, my dad would always come, my dad would always foot the bill, pay for it. So when my story came out, my friends that was around my father, they was like, wait a minute, what the hell? Right. Like what? But we, we've been around her dad. And everything looks so normal. And they, they so no one believed it. I had, I had some, and their ex friends, she was like, "Stop lying! Why would I lie about that?" But how did your dad feel about you? Oh, he stopped talking. Me? We haven't talked. Um, we haven't talked. My organization will be seven years old uh, in December. It'll be seven years that um, we haven't that we've spoken. And my sister has taken my dad's side. So I mean, my sister. So she doesn't believe you because I speak well. Um, I know you say you were quiet a lot of times, so she they wouldn't. Well, know. she uh, wasn't that she didn't believe me, but my sister was always in my shadow. Unfortunately, oh, she to be for, I was firstborn, first grandchild. So for her, this was an opportunity. The now I have a parent that's really paying attention to me, and gotcha. so her and my father are on one spectrum. Me, and my brother, and my mom are on the other spectrum. Got you. So my family right now is it's broken, but it's always been broken. Wow. Right. But at least the truth is out there. Mm -hmm. That's all that matters. You just leave it up to God and he'll do the rest of the work. Well, he's the one leading me, so. Yeah, yeah. So would you say that, who have you helped as far as a person that's been through some stuff like you? Is there any, and you don't have to put a name on it, but right, okay. a particular person <laughs> no, that, that has went through the same thing that you're, You've uh, your your experience. You you experience some not not in as ex. In, in no, I want to know if there's anybody worse that you've ever encountered. Well, here's the thing, right? And that people have asked that all the time. And to me, when I hear someone's story, I'm like, oh my god. But someone that's hearing my story and their story be like, Wanda, but yours is worse. Yeah. But I I remove self. Yeah. And I'm like, wow, that happened to you. Uh, before COVID, we had a support group, and um, I would facilitate, and we'd have a bunch of women. It, I even had a man that was an abuser that would come to the and support. And he was an abuser. He was the abuser, yes. Wow. And um, he learned a lot, too. They would pour into me. Now, when I would get him, I'd be strong for them, okay? You can't really compare one abuse story to the other. Like, which one is worse? Because they're all horrible but just listening to them when I would get in my car I would just cry and be oh my god god this happened to these women because it's not I've, I've never heard a woman's story and then try and compare because to me they're they're all horrible now have I met someone yet that has gone through the length 
No. But to me, I don't care if, if it was five minutes. Mm -hmm. It's I, I've never like stopped. Everybody's any. trauma is different and how they react to it mm -hmm. is totally different. Some people commit suicide because of it. They do. And it's it's you know, and to them it, it, it was the worst than anybody else. That's mm -hmm. why they did that. Mm-hmm. Not to mention, a lot of people um, don't really believe in voices and people are being told to do certain things. And for me, if you believe in God, you've got to believe in the devil. If you believe in good, you've got to believe in evil. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times people are like, girl, anybody's talking to you. And then you, there have been times, especially since I've been obedient with God, I tell people all the time, and they ask about how the organization started and all of that, and of course it was God that told me to do it. But the part that I leave out the most is, but the devil came to visit me first. It wasn't God that came to visit me first. It was the devil. And the devil offered me a deal, but wow. I didn't take it. No, oh, that's... Uh... What did he say? Hmm. What he did was he literally um, took me through my past, names, places, present, and then a tad bit of my future, and then he stopped. And then he started laughing. And he says, I know what's in store for you. But he said, if you sign your soul over to me, I can give you so much more. Now, what I do recall was calling out in Jesus' name. When I came to, I was petrified. Couldn't remember why. I was so scared. I prayed all day for God to please reveal to me why is my spirit so raveled? And when God revealed to me what happened, then all I can do was start praying. But that happened, and then three years later is when God showed up. But the devil came to me first. That's so crazy that it was so much of a long period of time. You know, that's why a lot of times when I tell people pray, pray for whatever you, you want because God will answer your prayers, but everybody's looking for it to happen tomorrow, the next day. Sometimes you have to forget it and then sometimes you don't even realize it actually happened till mm -hmm. you're looking back in your life and you're like you know what i did pray for that and look at this isn't god good because mm -hmm, i was praying for him to use me i just didn't know he was going to use me like this <laughs> yeah well yeah, no what's spectacular about it is that you're ready to counsel on a whole nother level than others are able to even fathom so the things that you've experienced god just going to use it to help others as he's already doing that's pretty much the way the game go i hate to say it but Everybody has a ministry that God pulls out of them. And mine could be something. Yours could be something. Yours is something. But he, he lets you go through experiences so that you'll be able to bring other people out of the darkness. Exactly. And that's the way that he works. And I've definitely I've seen that in more ways than one. You know, mm -hmm. if I start telling my story, we get real quiet in here, too, because I've been through a lot. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So that's the whole game. I, I like the way that God take people and let them go through situations kind of like he did Joseph when he was sold away in the Bible. And basically he was sold and the Midianites and the Ishmaelites took him to Egypt. And next thing you know, he's over there and he's going through and his brothers and his family and everybody feel like, you know, he's been abandoned, but he never complained. That's who you reminded me of when you talk because it seemed like you're going through this, but you just continue to go through it. And basically without any complaints and that's the way Jesus was too. But Joseph that's the way he was when Potiphar's wife, she went at him and tried to get him in a situation. Mm -hmm. Brother sold him out. You know, then he went to jail. Once he got the butler turned his back on him. Next thing you know, he ends up, you know, God used God him now. God still rewarded him in the end. To help everybody around him because of everything he'd been through. At the end, he was able to help all the families and the people that wasn't even in his family. In his family or his family, uh, his brothers and sisters. So, mm -hmm. or brothers, not sisters. But the thing is, God uses the people. He let them go through things, is what I'm saying. And the thing is, with that, I always say everything happens for a reason and in its own time. And then I've even had friends when I, because that's one of my famous quotes, I always say it. And I've had a friend who asked me, what do you mean by everything happens for a reason? Because what happened to all these bad things that people go through? You know, people lose kids. I mean, so many 
evil stuff mm-hmm. happen. I said, yes, but it's not our job to know who it, that situation was meant to touch. Mm-hmm. It's not our job to know that, but to know any bad thing that happened, it touched somebody because if a person lost a child at a young age or, you know, the nurse could have been touched by a situation. Somebody who's been watching that person carry that child for all of those months and turn around and lost a child. Mm-hmm. And then that person, faith still strong, and that person didn't whether argue against God or whatever, the situation is somebody else got motivated from that situation. Right. Or because of what you went through all those years, it enabled you to do what you're doing today and for people to come to you and know that anything I pour into you, you've been through that or worse. Because I've, I've seen where some people say, you can't advise me, you've never been through what I've been through. Mm-hmm. But because you've been through what you've been through and you're still here standing and they can look at you as a success story. And I know that this is something that you would have because yesterday we had counselors on and I've asked them, do you ever get over the trauma? Is there a time where through counseling for years, that you are able to say, I overcame it. And they said, no. No. But people believe that. And that's not, no. Um, and I hear people all the time, you know, you can be healed. You can be healed. Yes, you can heal. But here's the thing. Triggers. Triggers. And that's exactly what they said. And my um, first rape is my stepfather. I hadn't seen the man since I was 18 years old. And four years ago, he called me. Now, he had to Google me on social media or Google, it's not hard to find me. So he got my nonprofit number, not my personal number. But when he called me, because I was on my nonprofit, I had to answer, not not thinking it's going to be him on the other Mm -hmm. line. And immediately when I heard his voice, I went back to that 12-year-old little girl. And we were on the phone for almost three hours. I couldn't get off the phone. And even though this man still believes that I wanted him and that he should have married me and not my mom, he told me that he still has the panties from the night that he raped me and that he had contemplated at least three times since I was 18 to actually come and get me. And after all of that conversation, when he was getting off the phone, he said, I love you. And that 12 year old girl said, I love you back. Now, when I hung up that phone, the present came back. And when I said, I say that I kicked, I screamed, I yelled, I felt disgusting. I was, I, I cried for like hours. I got in the trunk of my car. It was like I was being raped all over again. And then I couldn't believe that I had allowed myself instead of cussing his ass out. Mm-hmm. That's the first thing I would think. Mm-mm. I went straight back to that little girl. And that's where I was for almost three hours. How Since do, you have his number now, do you ever feel like... I don't have his number. No, because he called you, so mm-hmm. you... I don't have it, though. Yeah, okay, but how I, do you... Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How do you, um, how do you deal with now with the man that you're with? Um, Touching you? No, you're like counteracting those those triggers because of sex. Does that does that any way kind of... Do you ever think of the, Fla- the times that you went through? No. How do you block that out? It's a different person. Okay. So, like I said, when I was raped, um, and here's another thing. I left home when I was 15. So I've been on my own since I was 15. I'll be 50 next year. And even though I was, I left home at 15, I was still being raped until I was 18. Yeah, because I was trying to figure out how you were doing that mm-hmm. when you said earlier that you was raped from 12 to 18 mm-hmm. uh, by somebody different if you left home. Was he coming over to your apartment? I, it's normalcy. So my stepfather, if I dealt with my stepfather, if I needed to borrow the car, if I needed this, if I needed that, here, you can have this, but I need this. So it's exchange, being groomed. My dad, I flew home every year for my birthday because I knew I was going on shopping sprees, and I knew if I just lay down for however long that took, I was going to have whatever I wanted. You're groomed. 
just like sex trafficking. Mm -hmm. when, when you're programmed that way, it's just what you do to survive. It's called surviving. So me and my mom were arch enemies. So as 15 years old, you had no one else to turn to. You do what you do. Was I not? I was. I wasn't living with neither one of them. But when I really needed something, they were just phone call away. Wow. And I was. My dad taught me instead of teaching me how to sign my shoes. My dad would always tell me because of what I have between my legs, I will never go without. And wow. I didn't. So. Wow. That's, that's and that's your dad told you. Yeah. That. Yeah. <laughs> that's a father, and 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 it, it becomes a normalized condition as you go through it because you learned you, you've been going through something our whole entire life. And yeah. so at some point, like you say, later on now, fast forward, you feel like it's God that removed you from all those different things that happened to you. I mean, do you read your word? Do you read the Bible? Not as much as I should. Yeah. And only I'm asking that is because that's what cleansed me. You know what I mean? Just getting the things out of me that had me bound by putting the word of God in me. But here's with me, right? But so, everybody's different now, I'm going to say that. And you know what I mean? I've actually had several personal experiences where I knew it was him. Mm. It doesn't, not the, in my head, like literally leaves circling off the ground, trees, like I've had experiences where you'd be like, this is like a movie. Wow. So my personal relationship with God is, man, people that know me and have been around and experienced me just sometimes just shake. I mean, it's, it's really hard to put into words without sounding crazy. Cause some people you can be like, say it cause we be, we believe in in you know what the word says, well, uh, and we um, we know God can do a lot. So there's nothing that you can say that can so surprise us surprise us if you think about it. So because she looking at me like, well the thing <laughs> I, I can say is you know uh, everybody has a uh, uh, everybody God has a plan and a place for everybody. Mm -hmm. Now He even did it in the Word of God when you read it. I mean you know Philip and. Peter and uh, Andrew and all of them had different ways. Judas definitely had a different way because he was a betrayer. So everybody has a different relationship when it comes to linking to God mm -hmm. and the way they react to God. So it doesn't surprise me that you say you have your own way that God and you have a job, you know, y'all kind of jive together. You know, that's, that's not because I understand that God has, he's bigger than what we could ever think I ask. So I don't really ever try to scale what he can do with you versus what he can yes. do with you versus what he do with me. Right. I'm cool with it because I know he God and I know he bigger and better than anything that I could. He's the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So right. I don't have to even, I don't play with it when it comes down to the power of God. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, and I know he can heal. And I, if he healed you a certain way and, and, you, and, you, and it's, it's unexplainable and unattainable i'm cool with that you know what i'm saying because i know he bad mm. you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. and a lot of people can't deal with that they can't and everybody everybody want to try to figure out a way to uh, uh look at you and analyze what you went through so they can figure out how to make it their own little old uh thing in their mind to say oh i feel this way not me i just know he bad because he's been good to me so i don't have to i don't have to try to and everybody analyze stuff differently like for me in everything that um god's reveal god reveals to me I like to, um, I read his manual, because that's what I call it, his manual. Mm -hmm. So by reading the manual, I learn so much more about steps. I learn about how to decide for certain things. Um, yes, he, he'll hit you with certain things. And yes, the devil speaks to you, because voices, I do believe in voices, because I've also heard, and I'll be like, I know that's not God, so you need to just back up. You know, and I'll talk to him. If I'm in the room mm -hmm. by myself, I'll talk to him and I'll know, no, not today. Or if it's something that God is telling me, because it's something that I know is positive, And I'm like, okay, God, I know I need to do that. I, I, I'm going to do it right now. <laughs> you know what I mean? So everybody, I think everybody here is just, are you going to react to it? It depends on which one are you going to react to. Are you able to decipher mm -hmm. 
is that from God because the devil is very cunning. He'll come to you like it's God, but it's really not. You have to be, for me, in in the word to know, okay, no, 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 that's not him. I got a question. When when Celia was being raped by her father in the movie Color Purple, and you seen that, did it? Did you ever watch the movie? Did you even watch it? Several. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm, just, I'm just making sure. You know, I think about that. You know that. what? My triggers are not um, it's well, them like personally. That. It's not even them. It, I, it, I can be driving home and all of a sudden get it just hit you. angry and pissed off and start crying at the pullover. So it's not... I'm, I'm in a movie. So um, the movie's called um, Scarred for Life. The movie was actually, we did a play. It's called Scar for Life. So the, the movie's a spinoff from the play. Okay. And the movie, the, the play and movie, it's kind of snippets of my story. And so it's unscripted. And when we got the play, we had like an outline. So we, all amateurs with the play, and I'm like, unscripted. So we're supposed to memorize as we make up. But here's the thing. Given this outline, okay, in this scene, this is what happens. Now, when we begin to ad lib, which we're reliving our life, for me, that was a trigger. Because now so. I'm, I'm back in it. Back, back in it. it. We had rehearsal Saturday, and the scene that I had to do was my husband's mistress, is, which is his agent, is coming by the house to drop off some paperwork. Well, she don't know that I know that they messing around. Listen, when that doorbell went off, I went straight back to when I was with my ex-husband. And un unfortunately for her, she wasn't ready for it. Because when I said I unleashed, my hands were shaking, my heart was pounding. And if I could have hit her, listen, it was just all of that. So for me, this movie those are triggers because now I'm physically back in it. Mm -hmm. and You're very courageous to even do that ooh. because anyone would look at that and know that the whole movie would be a trigger because you had to go back. It's, it's pros and cons. Meaning like you might not be the greatest actress, but you don't have to, to relive something and come back into it because mm -hmm. they're picking it up like it's real. So anybody watching that movie is going to be like, she's a great actress, but they wouldn't know that she's reliving right. what she already the went truth. through. And I just posted that too. I was like, well, rehearsal, how it went. Well, I'm not acting, I'm reliving. And even with the play, the husband, I picked my husband and I actually picked the guy that came to my support groups that was the abuser. Mm. So when we rehearsed the play, I would go home with bruises on my body from the play because of him grabbing me and snatching me. Yes. So in the movie, we have a rape scene where he rapes me and when I, received the outline of the script for 48 hours i was messed up yeah why didn't you choose for a double for somebody else to act that part that's not what god said for me to do yeah no, and and okay. where, 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 just, it's I my just story to know because Correct. people people would think that like for the main fact that you had to go through all of that some people wouldn't be able to go up there and reenact it but the one thing about it is i didn't deal with it when it happened this might be my opportunity to actually deal with it. So you still It'd really be, haven't? No. Uh -uh. Did you do counseling at all? When um, my mom and dad and all that. So I went to, I remember going to counseling. I remember the infamous boy doll, girl doll. How old were you? Uh, I was in elementary. When you went to counseling. Mm -hmm. And um, that's all I remember. Because as a child, you just you block. All, you just want to go home. You just want to be with mom. You so just want you don't to be dad. remember. Anything I just remember from the counseling. dolls. And it's so funny because we had a person on here recently who spoke about, um, and she wants to be a psychiatrist because she said she wanted help against sexual abuse against young kids, mm -hmm. only the young kids, because she was four when it happened to her. Mm -hmm. And at four, um, she remembered, she said she was a brave little kid. She, after it happened, she went home to her mom, told her mom everything that happened. And her mom, you know, sent her off a little bit and went off on whoever or whatever. But, um, so she didn't really feel like something was wrong because she's four years old. So she was telling her about her day, what happened. Right. Anyway, so um, she said, after going through counseling, 
the counselor kept asking her questions over and over, the same stuff, re and reliving everything. So for her, she had nightmares continuously after that because she kept reliving it because they, it's almost like they keep pounding it into her right. head because of all the questions that they would ask. Mm -hmm. And the positive side of the counseling was they told her to, to write, write out what, you know, um, she went through different things. So she ended up becoming a songwriter. So mm -hmm. she ended up being a musician because of that. Before that, she wasn't writing, thinking about writing. Right. So that's the positive side of what came out of it. But she can tell you everything about what happened in counseling. And she said, no young child should have to relive that every day of their life mm -hmm. in counseling. And then to hear you say that you don't even remember I don't anything, remember it. Mm -mm. But she does remember it like that, like it was yesterday. I said, there's a lot of my past I don't remember. Well, a lot of times she was uh, questioned by the counselor, and she was just a little girl, so it ended up traumatizing her for having mm -hmm. to be asked over and over again. This young lady here, she went basically through went through it and kept going through it, and it became a normalized situation when it wasn't normal. She had to, in her mind, make it a normalized situation where you know it, nobody should have to bear that you know burden and nobody should have to go through that but like again i say dope because of the fact of how you can help people who are going through situations you know that's a dope thing i mean kudos to you i mean and i hate you had to go through it i do but um at the end of the day i know that you're gonna god's gonna use you like he's already doing in a miraculous way where can we where can we find that uh, the movie? Is it gonna come out uh, mainstream or is it gonna come out as a play? Where, uh, where, where is it coming? Because a small I would film? definitely want to watch it. It's and what's the name a, of it again? It's Scarred for Life. Scarred for Life, the, guys. The play is already. Uh, we did the play in 2019, and okay. then COVID hit, so we didn't get to do the touring and uh -huh. all that. So now we're we're just started rehearsing for the movie this past week. Cold. And when is the movie coming oh, out? It takes a little time. Yeah, I have, honey, I have no they, idea. They, they have but you have a TV it. show as well, don't you? We do. We What's have. I have a that? TV show called We Are Survivors TV. Okay. And, Where can they find um, that? It's actually on Roku and um, FMD Global TV TV. Okay, and how can people get a hold of you? Like, if they want to. Um, I reach out to you and the foundation, Survivors Foundation. How can they? How can they get a? You know, what's the number? Well, um, for or the or the email address. Or? The email address is we are survivors foundation at gmail dot com. Okay. And then um, phone number is two one four nine six six five one five two. That's actually my um, business number versus the foundation. So if you want to get a hold of us. Do it by the email and, address. And, and Instagram, are you guys on Instagram or Facebook? It's We Are Survivors. You can either do We Are Survivors on, on Facebook. It's either We Are Survivors, and then we have We Are Survivors Foundation, mm -hmm. and then we have We Are Survivors TV show. Well, you have a remarkable story, I, and, and I just want to say um, thank you for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. But I'd like to ask you some, a little bit more about your foundation because I was reading um, on your site the different things that you do help people who come to you. Because um, tell us about what the foundation does for someone. So if somebody sees this show and say, okay, I would love to reach out to her and reaches out to you, what can they expect? Well, it actually really depends on um, the situation and the scenario and if they're coming for personal help or if they're coming to work with us because We Are Survivors is actually international. Um, I've been blessed to travel to Germany, Finland, Africa, and London. Did I say that already? <laughs> um, so we're actually working on building a shelter in Nigeria right now. Okay. Um, so it really depends on what they're what they're coming to do. Are they coming to work uh, with the, the foundation? Are they coming to work on the TV show? Are they coming because they need help themselves? And that's not just okay. So if they need help, what are, what do they expect from you? Now we have an, an ordained minister. So if you need spiritual guidance prayer we can offer that mm -hmm. if you need counseling i am a therapist so we can offer that um we have connections with people that if you need like i know an organization that provides one-way tickets like if you're really serious of course it's a process but if you're in a situation where you're trying to escape you have somewhere to go but there's no money that's available so we have a, a contact that you can work with 
unfortunately in Dallas County, beds are full. And so um, we do work around calling, trying to find places. We have you know, some contacts with women who have homes. I kind of call it the Underground Railroad. That's what um, I was thinking about, because I remember I was mentioning um, the movie Enough, and that's what they did yes. to, to get that help. I was just wondering if anybody can get that help here. Mm -hmm. yes. Okay. Thank you so much, um, Dr. Wanda McKinley. I appreciate you for coming on Boss Talk 101. Thank you. You know, we we uh, we needed this. We're going to see a lot of people going to see this and hear this on our podcast, and they're going to get healing. We mm -hmm. believe that. So, you know, um, I know God is he big enough for the job. we just vessels. He used us, and we're pretty much used of him to help others. He worked through people, and you're one of his angels. Thank you for coming on the show. And I would love Thank to you. volunteer. Say, man, check it, man. It's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101. And we out.